this video I'm going to be reviewing the Harry's holster for the Glock 23 Gen 4. Now, if, from the date of this video, pretty much all the holsters are going to look the same as far as the body. The difference that's going to set them apart is the hardware. And that makes it very convenient for his manufacturing and everything else. So it's going to be, you know, plus or minus however many dollars based on what you get. Now, the soft loops version, I got the soft loops version because I don't really like clips. Uh, I don't have any experience with their discrete clips and that he sells, but you know I typically go with soft loops because I know it's going to be nice and rounded. It's not going to give me problems with my uh, my little cover garment. But with that said, first thing I want to say is, of uh, before I go ahead and get into this, you got to keep in mind that I'm carrying at about a three o'clock, and it seems like most of these were meant for some type of appendix carry. And that's really where all these holes come from is the different hardware that you can get to kind of help you conceal better and adjust it accordingly. So just keep that in mind as I'm going throughout this review. So I've had experience with these holsters in the past with the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield holster and that's where I really fell in love with it on a on a few points. First thing I really do like is the modularity here. So if you're not happy with the way that you're carrying or the hardware that you have or whatever, you don't have to get a completely new holster. It's not set in stone. So you can go ahead and get hold, uh, you can go ahead and adjust the ride height on the hardware that you get with it, which I have done a little bit of adjustment. And you do get a little bit of thread lock or Loctite, whatever you want to call it, a little, little pillow pack of it and you know that'll that's really good because sometimes screws can walk out on holsters well a lot of times they typically do but I haven't had too much of an issue with these but I do appreciate that feature and also the the modularity is a big plus so you don't have to spend you know another $70 because I spent $70 on this holster you don't have to spend more money getting a whole new holster you just keep the holster you have if everything else is good and you just get the hardware that you need to in order to make the adjustments. So with that said, <clears throat> the biggest selling feature for me that actually made me come back to Harry's holsters was the retention. The retention is not just how it how it holds when you do that, but basically when I pull out after a certain, you know, amount of force, it'll come out. Now this is broken in pretty well. There is a little bit of a break in and on this clock you can see that it kind of did a uh, rub the texture off of the trigger guard here a little bit and that's a good thing that means that it's actually holding pretty tight and that uh, that to me is a good sign but if you guys are finish queens and you don't like finish wear you're gonna get a little bit of finish wear from this kydex holster who cares um, but you know that's just a little feature to, re to remember or a little uh thing to remember if you're concerned about that but this was the biggest selling feature for me when i'm reholstering I love this right here. I don't know why. It just gives me the warm and fuzzy. Ugh, it's just so positive. I haven't had to mess with the retention any, the retention screws. Now, if you want this to um, be a little harder to pull out uh, when you're drawing, then obviously you can mess with the retention screws a little bit. And you do have a little bit of a limit. Like, if you're not wearing, even if you're wearing a t shirt or whatever, and you're carrying this tight against the body, if you get these screws, you know, all the way through, which would be pretty a pretty tight pinch, um, it could be pretty uncomfortable. And that's the one thing about uh, some Kydex holsters that are minimalistic, kind of like this. It, it's a good thing to be minimalistic, but you got to be careful that with screws like this, like I've had this experience on other holsters where the screw's exposing, uh, that can really chafe up and uh, cut up your skin uh, over time and throughout the day. So also here, I, can, I need to be careful about the screws here, not to get them, you know, basically to the point where they're going out too much. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're going to be uh, looking at this holster is don't, don't make it to where the uh, screw is basically sticking out too far. And it is recessed a little bit to protect from that somewhat, but you can't really uh, get it to be completely perfect depending on the tension that you want. That's why it's very good that he puts a little bit of uh, thread lock or Loctite in in the uh, bag with the holster, and I do appreciate that. So whatever you set up you go with, go ahead and put a little bit on there to kind of set it in stone, so to speak, or at least, uh, you know, get it pretty firm until you decide to adjust it. So anyways, 
I really do appreciate how it comes right, uh, right from the get-go. I, I don't know if he's using a real gun or a blue gun to get kind of uh, test the tension, but he does a really good job, and that was actually a big selling feature for me. I just realized how nice it is when you're holstering to actually get that positive click. I just like it. Whatever. Anyways, moving on. So, I really do appreciate the attention to detail uh, of this holster as far as like the shape it makes around the gun, a little extra room for the hardware and everything. It there was a, a good amount of detail in the design and in the grind. The only problem that I've had is this part right here. There was a flat grind right here and I'll adjust the light. Hopefully you can see a little better. But the grind was not exactly perfect right here on this edge because I can actually feel a bit of a sharp edge here. It's not a big deal. I can just run a file over it and knock it off. But it really hasn't been hurting my skin all that much. Now, um... There's one thing that I do need to talk about. The pinch problem with a holster like this, and this is pretty much any holster like this that doesn't cover the magazine or whatever. Um, if you're a little bit on the heavier side and you have your muffin top that's all that, uh, so you might get a little bit of a pinch when it overrides this area, and I certainly did when I was, you know, being a little careless with my uh, eating habits. Right there. I pinched myself right there, and it's not like it was a little pinch and it was gone. I actually had to take the holster, or I had to take the gun out of the holster, get my fat out, and then, or get my skin out of the way, or whatever, and then reinsert. That was absolutely careless of me. Now, if you have something like a t-shirt on, you're going to be able to avoid that a, a bit better, but... That's just a note for anybody that's interested in a minimalistic holster like this. If you want to completely avoid that, uh, you're going to have to go with something like a hybrid holster. So uh, that will basically add more size. And this this is really minimalistic for me, even though the soft loops do kind of bulge out a little bit. So I'm, if I'm wearing a light garment that will basically print this, then it's kind of, uh, I guess, a disadvantage as far as like uh, being discreet. But, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, just realize that you may have a pinch problem so unless you're wearing, like, a T-shirt. But just a little snippet. Yes, I'm talking a little too much here. But if you're wearing a T-shirt, in my experience, even if it's tucked in, unless you are going to be wearing shirt stays, I feel that it, it, is, a, it is actually going to hurt you in the end, from my experience, from carrying guns. Uh, if you're wearing a t-shirt and then you're wearing this and it's between your holster and your skin, the problem is going to be uh, your t-shirt's going to walk up uh, throughout the day. And then when you go to draw or whatever, you might end up grabbing t-shirt with the gun or whatever, obstructing your draw. So in some way, and especially if you're practicing, you'll notice. The more times you draw, the more friction there is and all that other good stuff. So unless you're wearing, like, shirt stays or something like that, there's really not much of a way to prevent that in my experience. So that's just a little note. Some people might not have an issue, but I would say they're either not practicing that much or their position is a little bit different, and maybe I I don't know, but I think most of it is uh, if you're if you're not really experienced that with a tucked in shirt, then you're either holding the holster against your skin really tight to where it's kind of uh, preventing the shirt from coming up around it. But this area is the big one right here, and especially when you're grabbing around this right here, getting a positive um, hold on it. Just this motion right here, that right there, that's pulling the shirt up. And then, especially when you're drawing. Oh, love that feeling. Love that positive snap. So anyways, you know, that's just a little note for anybody that's looking to get a holster like this. The only way to really prevent it is, uh, like the pinch problem, a hybrid holster. The problem with the hybrid holster, you may not always get a very positive uh, draw or a positive grip because you are kind of hindered with a wall that prevents you from actually getting around the holster or getting around the gun in the holster like this. So you may not be able to actually grab it like this. You may get like a partial grip and then get a full grip as you're drawing. But, you know, it is what it is. I do love these holsters. I'll continue to do business with 
uh, this company because I just like the products that they put out. Everything else is pretty much on me to adjust or be careful of, but you know, I do like the ability to kind of play around with different positions of carry and not have to, you know, buy a whole new holster just because. So, unless I get a new firearm. But with all that said, you're a little bit limited on the selection for the different types of guns that they that he has. It's pretty much the most popular ones uh, for the most part. But uh, and I I think you can go ahead and email and see if he'll make one for you. But of course, you're probably going to end up paying a little bit more because it's going to be uh, kind of off on the side, you know, a little bit extra because he's got to do a whole new gun rather than his uh, his normal selection his mass-produced selection, so to speak. So, uh, with that said, not really a down a, a downside since most of the holsters that he offers are, are popular carry uh, pistols anyways, uh, or most of the gun holsters that he offers are in guns that are popular carry pistols anyways. So, with all that said, I appreciate you guys watching. Sorry for talking so much, but go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think, and uh, if you have any experience with these holsters, let me know any pros or cons that you guys have just for the audience's sake so they can get more data. So, thank you very much for watching, and you guys have a good one.